If you like AMD, there's been a lot of news this week. What's your minimum specification? There's been a lot of AMD news recently. First, AMD is in the Wi-Fi game. Second, they're initiating stock buybacks. And third, AMD at Computex. Welcome everyone. So let's start off with the Wi-Fi. AMD is now launching its own Wi-Fi 6E module called the RZ608 or RZ608, depending on where you come from. This is an M.2 2230 Wi-Fi module, standard Wi-Fi 6E compliant, and it's going to be featured on the Iron Neo, which is one of these you know small little handheld devices coming out of crowdfunding. Now, Ioneo has already shipped to a thousand or so customers, and they've got a second batch of 2,000 units where the Wi-Fi is being upgraded to this AMD Wi-Fi module. Standard sort of thing for, you know, these sorts of handhelds. Antenna is going to be built in, and these units should ship by the end of the month. Now, you're probably wondering, hey, hang on a second, does AMD actually have any Wi-Fi IP? And the answer to that is no. <laughs> What they're doing here isn't making their own, they're actually rebranding a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E chip. This is the MediaTek MT7921K, and it's actually easier for AMD to do this than to build their own Wi-Fi 6E chip. Firstly, due to the patents around Wi-Fi 6, second, around regulation when it comes to Wi-Fi. Now, anything that transmits RF has to be approved by the FCC, and by rebranding this MediaTek chip, they can get around having the need to go through the whole FCC process again because MediaTek's already done it and the way that regulatory bodies like the FCC work means that if you simply just rebrand a chip, it allows for the certification to continue. The one sort of regulation where this doesn't apply is like with uh, 80 plus power supplies. 80 plus every time you do a rebrand has to be reanalyzed even though it's the same components in between. But Wi-Fi doesn't and this is what AMD has done here. Now, you're probably wondering why. Why not just leave it to a MediaTek solution or someone else? The fact is that a lot of companies enjoy buying hardware strictly from the same company. If you can buy an AMD CPU, AMD GPU, AMD mainboard, AMD branded memory, AMD branded SSD, AMD branded Wi-Fi, then you've only got one port of call if you've got a support request. AMD. And this is kind of what's happening here. MediaTek design it, manufacture it, sell it to AMD, AMD slaps a logo on it and then does all the related support around that chip. Now it's coming with this Iron Neo handheld first for unknown reasons really. Um, if AMD really wanted to have a go on it, I suspect we'll see it on laptops fairly soon. Especially, you know, AMD Ryzen laptops. I think that's really where AMD is going with this. Exactly how it performs should be practically identical to the uh, MediaTek version of the chip. How that compares to, say, Intel's Wi-Fi 6 uh, versions, we're going to have to see when we find it in a device we can actually use. I'm not the one necessarily to go spending $800 plus on uh, a handheld device from one of these crowdfunding websites, though I fully expect to see it on laptops later in the year. Second piece of news is AMD's share buyback. AMD has announced that they will be investing $4 billion into repurchasing shares in the company. Now, AMD is getting a lot of revenue of late, and that's translating into direct cash into the company. And with the cash, usually one of three things happens. You either invest it in R&D, you either return it to shareholders in the form of dividends, or you purchase your shares back. What purchasing your shares back does is it increases your earnings per share, uh, just because you're taking few shares out of the pool, uh, even though your revenue stays the same. Uh, you're also increasing the ownership of the company for those who still own the shares. For example, the executives of the company, those on the board, and particularly investors. AMD has said that they're going to be buying $4 billion in the open market. It's a scheme that will be ongoing. It's going to be funded uh, not by loans, but by actual revenue that's coming in and uh, cash on hand. And this scheme can be cancelled or reduced at any time. They're really not putting uh, any sort of firm end date on it. Uh, though share price went up on the news because obviously it means investors are getting the money back for buying shares at this higher amount. I know a few of you will be wondering why exactly AMD isn't reinvesting this in R&D into, say, more GPU or more CPU. And there comes a point where you can only do so much. 
I think this is part of the ongoing process to you know, increase shareholder value and increase interest in investors into the company, but also realize the actual value of the company. Because it's such an open-ended announcement, uh, you know, they could buy zero shares for the next 12 months, then buy some for over the next 12 months. They've not really put an end date on it. They've not really said how they're going to do it, at what stages they're going to do it. Uh, we'll have to probably wait until we get an investor day from AMD to find out more details. One could argue they could spend it at TSMC, go on the latest manufacturing processes, or, you know, get TSMC to prior to prioritize AMD's chips. But that would reduce gross margins, and uh, AMD feels it's better to return the value of the company to its investors through these share buybacks. Now, the third bit of news is really important. Coming up in, in what, about 10 days now, we're going to have the annual Computex trade show. Now, because of the global situation, it's obviously going to be virtual this year, but it is a showcase for the major companies to have keynotes and present what's going on at the company. Um, we've got Intel, ARM, NVIDIA, and AMD, all with keynotes this year. Um, they're going to be based in Taipei time. Uh, I think AMD's is at 10 a.m. Taipei time on the June 1st, which means it's going to be 3 a.m. where I am in the UK. It's going to be 10 p.m. the previous day, uh, Eastern, and 7 p.m. the previous day in Pacific. And we're going to see Lisa Su on stage talking about the company. Now, it's interesting this year because AMD doesn't really have anything to announce so much. What else is coming this year or immediately this year? We might see Threadripper 5000. We might hear about some enterprise stuff, though Computex isn't really an event where we talk about enterprise stuff. That's usually um, international supercomputing, which comes a few weeks later. So it's going to be interesting how AMD plays this one. We may see it a chance for the company to lay out its roadmap for the next few years. So we might hear about Zen 4, Zen 5, uh, how it's going to adopt DDR5, PCIe5, CXL, and mention all the companies that it's working with as it expands out and increases its market share across a number of verticals. I'm not sure if uh, I'm going to get a chance to interview Lisa Sue at Computex this year. I'm still waiting for the email. We'll see if that comes about. It should be really interesting to hear from her exactly what's going on with the company now. We're kind of in this fallow period where people want to buy as many chips as they can but AMD can't produce enough because of uh, substrate issues and manufacturing. Uh, it'd be nice to get some insight into that for sure. I mean, say I was to interview uh, Lisa Sue, what questions would you want me to ask? Thanks to everyone who supports the channel, either by watching or on Patreon, patreon.com slash techtechpotato. Really love you all for helping me out. So I've got to ask, Lisa, what's your minimum specification? <laughs> <laughs>